Oh, hello, Gabe. Hi there. Hi. Uh, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Nice to see you. You as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're here to talk about Mank. Hello, everyone. Make yourself to home, Mr. Mankowitz, or shall I call you Herman? Please call me Mank. 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 This is Herman Mankowitz, but we're to call him Mank. Mankowitz. Herman Mankowitz. Yeah, the true screenwriter of Citizen Kane. Credited as a co-writer. Yeah, and barely got that. Yeah. And did win an Academy Award for it eventually, though. The best thing he ever wrote. Well, he wrote some good stuff. Considered the greatest movie of all time. Citizen you say Kane. that with a little twinge. Yeah, I don't know if you believe that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know. <clears throat> well, you know, there's nostalgia, and then there's uh, true art. <laughs> okay, we, we can get into that later. Okay. But uh, it's on Netflix. Um, it's up for Golden Globe. Six Golden Globes. It's leading for the most nominations. Yeah, and Gary Oldman plays mm -hmm. Herman Mankiewicz, and it's about the writing of Citizen Kane and, the, and a lot of background of uh, why he wrote it the way he did. It's helpful to be familiar with Citizen Kane right. when you see this, and it's in notorious black and white, of which a lot of young people don't seem to appreciate these days, do they? Um... I, I appreciate black and white. Oh, really? Yes, for what? the movies back when they were made in black and white. Oh, because they were stuck making them like that. They can't change. Oh, yeah, well, you can colorize. The color wasn't that great back then. Now well. we have technology that can, the you know, 8K film that can. Yeah, really, okay. I feel like the color palette of a movie can help with the emotionality, with the uh, investment for telling the story. There's a lot you can do, and without the color, it's kind of muted. Well, one could say that uh, colorizing a film is uh, blasphemy. Uh, let's say colorizing <laughs> Citizen Kane would be incredibly bad taste. Uh, Casablanca. Yeah, I don't think there's a reason to colorize those movies now. Well, there's all though. kinds of reasons, because a lot of young people... Remember, I, I ran video stores for 30 years, uh -huh. and a lot of young people, including you, you had to have a gun held to your head to watch a, a black and white movie. I appreciate to black this and day. white movies. Do you have a son, my grandson, Rowan? Yeah. yeah. Does he like to watch well, black and white? Not. No, well, of course well, not. He's Pokemon. So, so it's, it's a learned he's experience. Not watch King. <laughs> I bet he will someday. Someday, maybe. He has an artistic twinge to him, uh, big time. Uh, okay, there was a huge uh, complaint when Ted Turner. Turner Classic Movies, you know, CNN. Right. He was colorizing movies. It was business because he wanted these movies to be seen. He owned the rights to them all. He bought the universal uh, stock of films, uh, not Universal, Warner Brothers, and he started Turner Classic Movies, which to this day is something I think young people should be forced to watch, you know. <laughs> I, I'm not opposed to older movies staying black and white. Oh, okay, good. I feel like I understand the intention of making this uh, movie black and white. It was very intentional. Uh, and well, why do you think they did that? So it feels like the 1930s, because when we think of the 1930s, all of the media and stuff from back then, with the exception of the late 30s, was in black and white. Mm -hmm. Susan Kane was in black and white. Yeah, it has a little bit to do with a thing called cinematography. Well, <laughs> it does. It's shadows and light. Which can be accomplished with uh, color as well. Yes, but it was really at its greatest in, in early film. I feel like I understand it's like an homage to great old cinema, to the golden era of, of Hollywood. But for me, that novelty wears off after 10 minutes and I get bored. That's just how I felt when I was watching this movie. I felt like it could have been more captivating if they had the, the color to it. Well, you know, maybe they should colorize Mank and watch it and see if it's any better. You know. It might still be pouring. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, you don't, didn't even know who George S. Coffin was or Ben Hacked and all these great people that are walking through this incredible story. But it, of course, it's Shades of King Lear, which is no slouch thing. Um, the, 
well, Citizen Kane. Why did Herman Mankiewicz pick William Randolph Hearst, which ruined Orson Welles' career in Hollywood, you know, and Herman Mankiewicz, too. I mean, these are people who had crushing media power. Louis B. Mayer. These guys could make or break people, which this film shows. It's truth to power. And also, the, the, I mean, they call him the court jester. But that's Banquets, the, right. Yeah, but the, the court jester was the original truth to power guy that they, the king allowed to be put up with. You know, and that's what Mank did. It was actually one of the, the great performances of the year, in my opinion. Gary, Gary Oldman was right. incredible. Oh, the cast was incredible. There were aspects that I enjoyed about this movie, and big part were the performances. Um, I just have some critiques about the choices that they made, I thought, and I find it more interesting. Like the the, the world and the story uh, is more interesting, but I'm not that fascinated about stories about the writers or about the actor, or about the artist. I want to see. It, maybe it's because the stakes aren't high enough. Maybe, because I felt like this movie was like two hours of a drunken screenwriter in bed yelling at Orson Welles over the phone. That's how I, you know, it had its moments. I, mean, I didn't hate it, I just thought it was more interesting than entertaining. Well, I think there was a lot of depth in the film. It uh, has some parallels to today that I could see would go over the head of some people. Um, and the, the truth to power, the need to have the strength of character to tell people what they're doing wrong. I mean, we're talking about the election of the governor of California. That's a big deal. We're talking about the manipulation of good artists under the helm of Louis B. Mayer. That whole scene where he goes in and asks them to cut their pay in half. I mean, that relates to today. The super rich, you know, eating away at the poor. That film has so much power and depth to me. I, I consider it one of the better films. Now, I love old classic movies. I grew up on them. I still, to this day, think that they're the foundation of everything we see now. I really appreciate uh, Fincher. Uh, David Fincher, yeah, the he's director. One of the greatest directors alive. Well, it's an homage to his father, who wrote the original yeah. screenplay I thirty it was years. Interesting. Ago. It took him thirty years to finally write it. No, it took him thirty years to well, to make it. He wrote okay. it. His father's long. His first passed. draft was thirty. I know his yeah. father died in two thousand three or something correct. like that. Correct. Correct. Yeah, Jack Fincher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who, who uh, took it on as a challenge, and he understood the inner depths of this writer he was writing about and gleaned knowledge. I didn't know some of the things about why he wrote it until I saw the film. It's very insightful. Okay. Well, the cameos that surprised me. Bill Nye. Yeah, the science guy, okay. which was very cool. I know, I noticed his voice first. Yeah, I'm me like, too. Wait a minute. Yeah. Bill yeah. Nye. I, it's, a, it's a great film. Well, it would probably help for people if they're going to see this movie to watch Citizen Kane first and maybe... Well, if you haven't. Yeah. And, and who out there has not seen there. Citizen Kane? If you haven't... Don't tell him. Yeah, come on. <laughs> it's one of the greats. Anyway. Well, Mank is available on Netflix, so go check it out. Yeah, please. And uh, I don't know what movie we're going to do next. What movie do you think we should do next? I've seen a bunch of movies. One movie I would like to talk about is Wolf Walkers, which is nominated for Best uh, Animated Film by the director of uh, Secret of Kells. Uh, yeah, what, what do you think we should do our next movie review on? Uh, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Oh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Yeah, and a good movie is a good movie, whereas color, black and white. Yeah, I recommend Mank.